Hello everyone, and welcome back to another malware analysis video. My name is John Hammond, and I am super excited to bring this one to you, because honestly, I think this is kind of neat, pretty novel, uh, something different that we uh, have not normally done before. I want to showcase a very cool phishing email that a community viewer, uh, someone had submitted and sent along to me, so I'm pretty excited to showcase this one to you. Let's hop over to my computer screen, and let's get into it. I'm working in Remnux, the reverse engineering malware Linux distribution, and I'll fire up a terminal here. Uh, I'm working in Z shell at the moment using a terminator to be able to split my screen and do neat terminal things. Uh, but I am using a, a clean pure prompt. So you should be able to see everything like my full command now. And I have the color like syntax highlighting on for the command. So hopefully it's a good presentation at this point. But I have this directory called fish if I could type right away. And uh, I'll show you what we're working with. I have a couple files here, uh, some things that were included in this email, and I wanna show you the email to begin with, uh, and I also have the analysis photo from when I went through this previously, just to get a taste for what this thing was, but it's really, really cool, so I'm excited to get into it. Let me show you the screenshots of this email that was sent to me. Uh, I have a lot of this redacted, of course, for confidentiality, but I got this email, malware samples, the title here, got this just a little bit ago. It says, hey John, I watch your YouTube channel all the time and I love your videos. Thanks so much, super appreciate that. I love you as well. You're always asking people to email you malware samples. Well, here you go. Attached is a very interesting email I received in the email format, saved in a password protected zip file. I've done the same for the attachment of the message itself. And below is a screenshot of the original email, the message itself. I ran the attachment through virus total and got the message, no security vendors flag this file as malicious, which is kind of cool, kind of crazy, you know, uh, <laughs> in a weird, horrific way. Attached in the PDF file is is the uh, virus total results page. So we can check that out and we'll validate it just as well, see if anything has changed in the past couple hours. It says, if you do make a video about this, blur out any personal identity. Yeah, I got you, of course. So here is that screenshot of the phishing email. This is uh, sent with the subject message from caller, blah, blah, blah. Um, this individual, I, I believe, forward it to, forward it to their IT staff or the security staff, which is a good move. Absolutely everyone should do that if you receive a suspicious email and send it to me. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, this from address is ring central at the organization name, which is kind of crazy. Uh, ideally, at least supposedly from info at billingstream.net. Um, I'm not sure if that's a legitimate domain or something that may be used. I don't know. Here's the attachment, right? Again, this had the organization name. Uh, this right here was originally a logo for that organization, for that business, for that company. And it said, hello, individual's name. What was really, really interesting though, is this had the individual's name with their first letter and then their last name, which is all the information that you would be able to get out of their original email address, not knowing that actual person. So I have to think this is a bit targeted in a, in a crazy way, right? It knew the organization's name and we'll see it all throughout the rest of this file. And I'll have to blur it when we get into the sample itself because it literally knew the email target. Uh, it says, hello, this person, you have a new voicemail. And this email has the attachment that you'd be able to take a look at. New voicemail details from this specific date and time, uh, this duration, 103 seconds, which I guess is 60, one minute, and 40 to get to 100, uh, and then 30, another three. Yeah, so really not two minutes and 32 seconds according to this file name. But the file name is really interesting. It has this little like emoji note, musical note symbol, and it says the VM transcript, the voicemail transcript is unavailable. So kind of a peculiar, interesting message. Um, of course, he attached these files here for me to look at uh, and the virus total there. So if anyone, again, if you would like to send me some samples or stuff to make some cool content with, please uh, hit me up, link uh, to my email in the description below. All right, if we were to look at that virus total, like look up that this individual had performed, Zero out of 59. No security vendors flag this file as malicious. So that goes to show, maybe some preventive security might just kind of be uh, snoozing on the job here. But let's actually take a look at this. Let's uh, go validate this and check it out with uh, our own virus total analysis. I have this file here. That's the musical note, and I'll display that out on its own. There we go. Um, it literally had the organization name, including the file name, and it's not 
an audio file. It's not an MP3, it's not a .wav, not a .og, any of that crap. It's literally a .htm file. And we'll dig into it in just a second, but first, let's uh, let's hop over to VirusTotal and see for ourselves what this might find or, or, or pull up. Let's go ahead and choose a file. I'll bring this from Fish. Yeah, that's the directory I was in. This guy right here. No security vendors flag this file. Was Didn't have to do a, much of a like scanning engine because this was already provided previously. It has that SHA hash. And <laughs> hey, if you're if you got money on your horse in the race, your antivirus EDR magic silver bullet product of choice. Ooh. Oh, it, it just, it stings a little, doesn't it? Uh, Microsoft, whatever, whatever, vendor, product, etc. I know this is tough to do. Prevention is hard. Uh, let's get back to it, though. Let's see what we're up against with this weird file here. And this is an HTML document. Of course, you could tell by the, the file extension, although you can't always trust that, .htm. ASCII text with very long lines and no line terminators. So totally minified, totally compressed. Let's take a look. I'm going to open this up in my text editor of choice. You could be using whatever you'd like, right? You could be using Nano. You could start the Holy Wars with Vim and Emacs. Uh, you could use VS Code if you're uh, that kind of person. But this is it in Sublime Text. Now, I'll only turn on Word Wrap just so you can really, uh, just so you can really get this, get the right impression <laughs> for what we're looking at here. Um, so syntax highlighting, if Honestly, this line is so long that it would not be able to add in the colors for this HTML syntax without me adding the lines naturally on my own. Uh, you could see we have a HTML document, super simple HTML, boilerplate head, boilerplate script tag. So we're going to be doing some JavaScript stuff. And obviously this variable is a huge string of base64 encoded data. So they're trying to be sneaky, they're trying to hide, you know, maybe uh, maybe that antivirus product might just uh, skip, hop, and jump right past it. But look at all this, guys. How long is this scroll for? I don't know how YouTube's bitrate's gonna handle that one, but uh, there we go. After we've defined that humongous variable, what do you think we do? We write this out to that page, to that document, and we unescape, so we have all the little characters from ATOB or the JavaScript function to base64 decode the contents of this variable. Then we end our script tag, then we end our head tag, then we end our body. Oh no, we start our body with a break and literally nothing else. Fantastic. So we know our immediate marching orders. Let's figure out what this base64 data really is. Uh, let me go ahead and save a copy of this. Um, let's make another folder. No, no, no. Can I, can I make a new folder? Yeah, Y-A-T for YouTube. Um, let's call it stage1cleaned.html. There we go. I was trying to search for that rather than save it as the file name. Gnome is weird. This is the this is the crutch of me being on Remnux, where I'm using a different desktop environment, and I'm so used to Unity. So uh, we have the stage one cleaned, but let's carve out all of this base64. Uh, I'm gonna call that I guess stage one chunk dot b64. Because if I were to try and paste this into my terminal, which I normally would do, <laughs> as you all know, the syntax highlighting might just make a Z shell choke. So let's base64 tack D to decode that stage one chunk dot b64. And now all of this that's going to be displayed will, uh, you know, be the next stage in payload here. Let's tee that out to, I guess, a stage two dot HTML because we are seeing HTML tags in here and it's literally going to be considered a string. So now we can open up that stage two dot HTML and, and this is what we're looking at, ladies and gentlemen. You can see it starts with a single quote right up here because it is originally going to be a string but would be unescaped. So I'll have to remove the trailing and beginning single quotes that were up at the, at the start and the end here. And I'll try and zoom out. Uh, let me make sure word wrap is still on. Yep, it is. So you're seeing some stuff that's happening here. And it's all of this HTML, but it's 
kind of gross. You can see the head tag is still on the same line as HTML line, the title, etc. cetera. Uh, so before I start to make sense of this and comment on it, let's try and clean it up. I'm gonna copy and paste all this and we'll hop back over to Firefox so we could do like an HTML beautifier, I guess. Uh, you could do this with, of course, a plugin in your Visual Studio Code or in Sublime Text, literally whatever you want. I'm just going to end up honestly doing it with an online tool because uh, it's, a, I don't even know if I have like an HTML format plugin installed right now in Sublime Text. Uh, but So this beautified, I, I, I sorry, I kind of steamrolled right over that, just Googled an HTML beautifier or formatter or prettifier, slapped all of the code in with a copy paste, and then got to see adding tabs and new lines and spaces and good stuff. Uh, however, the JavaScript code that's kind of up here still isn't completely beautiful yet. You can see the document ready function and stuff that might be jQuery syntax, one library in JavaScript that isn't, isn't completely clean yet. So uh, let me go, you know, nitpick <laughs> and uh, clean up this JavaScript. So let's go find a, let's just Google JavaScript beautifier. Beautifier.io should work totally fine. Once again, slap it all in. I don't care. You shouldn't either. You can whine and complain, John, use a beautifier, but I won't listen to you because it's the internet. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, all of this, realistically, I would like to have indented just a bit more. Yeah, that's somewhat readable now. So let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, the title of this page is sign into your account, which makes me immediately think, ooh, this is a credential harvesting attack. This is some phishing email that's trying to fake a watering hole site uh, to get you to enter your password or your username or your login credentials so it could harvest it and collect passwords and do more damage later down the line, right? That, that password could potentially be all the bad guys, the threat actors and the hackers need. Unless you turn on multi-factor authentication. Mm, you, gotta, you gotta have 2FA everywhere, guys. Take it from me or don't. Your loss. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That sounds so pretentious. Uh, so what we have for this HTML here is that we have a lot of metadata type, crappy, annoying, stupid information, shortcut icon. Looks like Microsoft Auth.net and their CDN. I don't know if that's a legitimate uh, icon or not. Um, it could very well be. This this also looks like a MSFT Auth.net with a random name CSS file. Also, MSFT auth, random name CSS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we get legitimate jQuery. We get real, actual, the jQuery library in JavaScript. Now, uh, this actual script is the interesting part here because we can see we are using jQuery with the syntax document ready function, and we're grabbing the email that's gonna be present inside of this class.identity in the HTML, uh, and then grabbing out the contents. We show some light box form, focus on some elements, set the brand, disable stuff, blah, et cetera. Uh, we don't have to take a, a whole lot of attention to put in, in this space, but what's really curious is if we end up scrolling down, we see one Ajax call. And this Ajax call is going to end up posting to a URL here with the user email address that's applied as a variable and the pass, the password email address. Now, how is that retrieved? It, it is from the value and HTML of these like elements within the page. And we'll, we'll see that in action in just a moment. But if we were to actually end up clicking a button, this is setting up an event handler, jQuery syntax, for this specific button object and that ID, on a click event, what we do is we go ahead and show password errors, which are kind of interesting. It, it'll tell you, oh, 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 if your password is empty, here, have that error. If it's not, it'll still tell you, <laughs> oh, maybe here's a progress bar but it'll hide those other password error messages that could be present on the page. And then it sends this request, capturing that username and that password. The successful post, right, once it's done, it will just redirect you to legitimateoutlook.office.com. Are you guys putting the puzzle pieces together here? <laughs> what do you think that we're looking at? If I were to end up scrolling down, uh, you can see, okay, we've got some set brand function here, but the rest of this page 
is defining the light box, is defining the images. This is actually literally the background images uh, all included in base 64. You can see the background image URL for that CSS is just this blob of base 64 encoded. That way it doesn't have to externally reach out to some other website. Uh, if it's trying to just literally encapsulate all of the file content media stuff that this page should need, it's slapped into the code as embedded base 64. So I know that looks like a lot of nonsense, but that's kind of the purpose behind it there. Uh, more HTML that we don't exactly need to dig into. It's defining the structure of the light box. It's displaying it in CSS, etc. cetera. Uh, we found at this point the most interesting piece here. Uh, and again, more images that it might be embedding in. I'll scroll down very, very far. Uh, sorry, this is kind of very much right aligned. I don't know if that's, that's weird to read. But look at all the references here to end up being, oh, Microsoft. Uh, obviously, we saw the reference to Outlook and Office.com. Uh, this literally had the individual's email address in here. Again, makes me think a very targeted spear phishing attack. Um, I redacted that again for the confidentiality here, but this is that identity element here. You can see that dot identity that was referenced in the jQuery code. It's using this element. That dot identity refers to that specific class and this contents here is that redacted email or what was the real legitimate email for this individual, for this victim at the target organization. Uh, kind of crazy. Same thing, we got the enter password display. Can I move to the right at all on this? No, it's just, gonna, okay. And of course the prompt, hey, please enter your password. Your counter password is incorrect. If you can't remember, you could try and reset it now. Because you're accessing sensitive info, you need to verify your password. Blah, blah, blah. Now, I know it's one thing to show you all this code. It's probably another thing to get this idea in your head if I just were to literally show you the web page. So because I have this all saved locally, right, because, I've, because we've kind of carved this out and found it on our own and redacted it as needed, I can literally open up this stage 2.html in Firefox. Uh, I guess I, I should rename this to a stage 2 cleaned uh, and then control Z my way out of this. Okay, uh, I, I just paused the recording so I could control Z and make sure that I still ended up replacing. Oh, I saved this as the wrong file. <laughs> let me uh, let me rename this to uh, stage two original. Yeah. Okay, I think I got it set. That was me fumbling around on the keyboard. So let's literally open up this file, original file, stage two.html, and let's see what we got. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? Does that look like a pretty, uh, a pretty convincing phishing email to you? Uh, literally jumping over to what looks like the prompt for Office Outlook Online, Microsoft thing, official legitimate thing. Uh, and it would include your email address here. Like it, it knew that, oh, maybe you had already signed in partially or knew your account, but you have to verify or re-enter your password. And we could type in whatever we wanted here. And if we were to hit enter or sign in, click that button, remember that Ajax post request sends it over to that domain, hurleyauctions.us. Uh, so with that in mind, we now know that Hurley Auctions, way back here, um, oh, I, I, I lost a little bit of the, the formatting, the whatever. Uh, HurleyAuctions.us, that is the bad guy in this situation. So they try to send this to, let me, let me uh, add a new line here so that's more visible. HurleyAuctions.us gsjquery.php. That is allegedly the page that this all gets sent to. Now, because it is a .php, that makes me think there's some server-side code that will end up collecting or harvesting or keeping track of these credentials that were ended up sent and passed along. Uh, we know that the user was previously going to be pulled from that identity element that was pre-populated with this specific target in this spear phishing attack. So with that said, it may naturally just already know what users they've collected the passwords for as the threat actor and bad guy here. So that's kind of crazy, but let's go see what's up with this website, shall we? If I were to try and uh, curl 
that specific web page, hurleyauctions.usgsjquery.php. Oh, it gets angry because it's HTTPS, right? It probably needs something to handle uh, this SSL certificate. I'm not positive if that is because this is a self-signed certificate. Maybe we could literally open this up in our web browser. Uh, I'm feeling pretty bold. I feel like we could do that. Um... Let me show you real quick. That page, I'll add in tack K to not verify the SSL certificate in curl. It doesn't return anything if you were to make a get request, right? Let me uh, let me go back here. Let's let's try and change this to a post request. I'll add a tack X post to specify, oh, we're making a post request. We just aren't supplying any username or email or uh, anything else that that would expect. No response. Are we getting a 200 at the very minimum? Let's let's try an F12 here. Uh, I'll go back to my web browser and I'll open up the network tab. If I were to reload the page, 404 for jQuery and Favicon, but um, okay, are we displaying the actual page? Will, will curl show me the headers if I use a TACVV or like the response code? I'm dumb. Oh, that's a 404 not found. That page is no longer present, supposedly. But let's experiment with that a little bit. We, we, here, okay, we see an IP address here. We can keep that in mind. We could do that with Shodan or anything else. Uh, but the weird thing here, let's try and go to another page. Because jQuery.php allegedly does not return anything. But let's change this to a jQuery without a Y at the end. That returns a real 404. I have to think that the 404 that we're seeing as a response here might just be letting us know, oh, sure, here, we'll send you a 404, but will that always be telling you, oh, that was an invalid password or something? I'm not going to be able to put those puzzle pieces together right now on the fly doing some tiptoe tap dancing, but literally any other page, let's try to go to a.php. That returns legitimate 404. Let's try and go to just GS on its own, no file name. Can we get anywhere? Not found. How about if I were to remove the post request and just simply try and get that? We get a forbidden. So we know that that does exist as an endpoint like folder or directory, right? What if I were to try and go to GA and again change that? Not found. 403 forbidden versus the 404 not found makes me really feel like that GS is still present and alive and accessible. Going again, just to get request to the root of the page, uh, 403 forbidden. Mm. <laughs> Looking a little bit spicy there. Now, the, the greater questions that we have is because uh, we, we had just found the IP address here and we know from this error, oh, this is an Apache Win64 open SSL PHP, blah, blah, blah. This looks like a lamp or server, and I might be wrong, excuse me, excuse me, WAMP, Windows, Apache, PHP, maybe there's a MySQL in there or somewhere, or an XAMP or whatever. Uh, still weird, still pretty wacky. Uh, do we still have that IP address? Oh, we do. Let's go check it out on Shodan. I'm not worried. I'm not, I'm not concerned. Mm. An Azure cloud provider. Hackers know where they can get some free servers, right? Right. In West US, Azure Cloud, over in the US. Oh, so there is port 80 and there's what? RDP allegedly open? Is that right? What? 3389 RDP? When was this last updated? That That is new information to me. I had not seen that before. <laughs> okay, August 13th. Um... Um, um, can you, can you show me the RDP view? Like, do you make a connection to it? Is this a link that I can click on? Oh, please log in. Raw data. Uh, I don't have a LastPass kind of confusion set up on your, let me, let me pause the video and do that just to poke around a little bit more. Okay, so I've logged in to Shodan now, um, and that raw data actually doesn't give us a whole lot. Oh, but I did see that this, sure, cloud and self-signed certificate. Raw data will just give us kind of the JSON 
uh, notion here of all of these. Uh, interesting, though, that it is still seeing RDP from the 13th of August, just a few days ago. IP address, Microsoft Corporation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if I go into history, noting that we previously saw port 22 open, like SSH, and that thought it was Ubuntu. Okay, that's back in 2019. So potentially that was something that um, maybe a reused IP address in this cloud Azure provider. With that said, I have to feel like that 3389 port is is just used for maintenance, right? That's how they would have interacted with this cloud machine in the first place. So as attractive as that is and kind of how it's enticing and it might be interesting, ooh, ooh, can we go, can we go look at it? Can we go connect to it and play with it? Uh, this is not our box. This is not something that we could just go ahead and connect to and try to bump around because uh, that is frowned upon. Um, <laughs> there's the idea where you defend forward, right? Or you'd be... Uh, a little bit more proactive and slightly offensive when you do some defensive work, but I don't know if that's not, that is clearly not something that we should do, nor would I want to do that on uh, YouTube. So, with that said, though, I will kind of wonder if we were to end up making a legitimate post request to this and including data that it really would expect, like the user or email information or a password, etc. Uh, let me go triple check what that really needs. Oh yeah, detail as another argument there. So email, user, pass. Uh, this is our one and only opportunity to do something fun because you could, sure, if you really wanted to be um, a little bit more of a, of a jerkwad and spam this thing and oh, just flood the thing with a bunch of info um, and totally try and make a mess of this to hack back had to hack the hacker no we're not going to do that especially not on a live video on youtube but we will act as if we were fooled let's go ahead and grab a legitimate user agent let's say uh, what is my user agent real quick let's send this request with curl let's grab that guy let's add attack a in curl to be able to paste in that user agent and let's send some data let's say the uh, it needed here the email to be set to a, a user email. So let's say, let's make this in single quotes. Let's say email can equal a at a.com and it needed password. So password equals F U. <laughs> <laughs> the most family friendly I can get here, ladies and gentlemen. And detail, we have to set equal to zero. Let me uh, make sure I'm not missing anything or making any mistakes. I probably am, but you guys will scream at me and let me know in the comments. But here's our single and only packet that we'll uh, send with a, with a legitimate potential uh, uh, request to give data and info to these to these bad guys. Hello? Hello? Computer? I genuinely don't know what is happening right now. <laughs> Let me pause the video and see if this ever comes back and returns. I really should have added verbose headers on that. Crap. <laughs> ooh, 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 it came back. Okay, so that took 20 seconds for whatever reason, but literally no response and uh, return value from that. So yet again, nothing comes from this. Maybe the bad guys have an a at a.com fu credential now, though. Um, but again, if you wanted to do some stupid while loop and you just, oh, crank uh, as much data annoying crap in there as you really wanted to, you could do that. Connect to VPN, connect to some Tor. That you would be defending forward, although that is uh, not uh, something that I would advocate for. Uh, with that said, we aren't done with... Uh, with our good friend HurleyAuctions.us. This is where we could have a little bit more fun because we want to know, or I want to know, where is this domain registered and how is it registered? It is being hosted on an Azure cloud instance, but who is the domain? What is the domain being registered? So I'm running a who is command and let's see what we got. This is fun and this is where it gets a little juicy. Here's our domain name. And I'm not going to redact any of this because this is could very well be the potentially uh, bad things. Um, 
I'm not worried about the other individual that had sent this along to me and their confidentiality here. This is a registered domain through Namecheap, one domain registrar that uh, exists out there alongside GoDaddy and many others. Um, if there were something that were found nefarious or malicious with a registrar or registered domain through Namecheap, you have an abuse contact email and abuse contact phone number. You could send an email over here and send that along. Uh, but interestingly enough, it, it doesn't uh, hide or try to mask any of the details that would have been coming along with the individual that may have registered this domain. Now, looking at this, I don't know and can't say with any certainty that these are real or legitimate or if they're fake or if they're just dummy data or if a sock puppet account, crap like that. But there's that, there's that, and that, and that, and that, and that. So take it with a grain of salt. Take that for what you will. Maybe we can email this individual. I might do that because I don't think there's any shame in that. Uh, maybe that would make for a, a fun follow-up video. Let's blast an email to this fellow and see what they might be up against. Uh, is there any email reputation service? I don't know if that's a thing. Let's let's go on another uh, Jolly Joy ride to figure out email reputation. Sender uh, five Sender score. I don't know. Check your domain registration, dom domain reputation. Maybe we could see if, um, can I get a score or is this all fake? Do I need to, yeah, I have to enter. Oh, enter your IP address. <laughs> no, 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 nope, 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 nope. Nope, and with my way right out of here. Let's go see if, um, can virus total tracked on a domain, right? Let's go to virus total. URL. Ooh, let's get the full URL here. The HTTPS jQuery crap. Maybe Virus Total can do a quick peruse. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks, thanks everybody. Not a lot on that one, huh? What about the IP address? How about that? Can you give me any juicy detail on the IP address? I mean, it's I mean, it's an Azure cloud. It's a it's an IP address from a cloud hosting provider. So it's like uh, that's totally variable. With all of that said, we've got all this. So do with that what you will. But that you you can do that. You can look that up with with who is. So now that we're thirty minutes into this video, we are not yet done. We know that we have some bad malicious malware phishing scam something that fakes and masks and masquerades as an office outlook login page as a legitimate credential harvester a real watering hole attack so let's report this thing and i think that's something i need to really do in a lot more of my videos is make sure that oh if we do see badness let's make sure that gets reported and taken down so uh name cheap name cheap hosting abuse yeah 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 where can i file abuse complaints Ooh, this. Uh, I want to showcase this because it, it's good information for others to know when we see more crap like this. How and where can I file abuse complaints? We could send an email along to that email address that we saw in the who is output, but if you need to report a domain name, email address, or IP address involved in any illegal or abusive activity, I would consider that certainly at least one of those. Here are some tips to follow to make this process easier. You could submit a support ticket, choose abuse reports, that must be it. Please substantiate your allegation with concrete evidence and or any relevant information to verify the abuse and help us take appropriate action. Can I attach screenshots? Because I will absolutely, uh, absolutely load you up with some real investigation stuff. Child abuse, why did I say that out loud? Copyright, DMCA, email abuse, spam, fraud, phishing, phishing, phishing. <laughs> That's it. Nice. If you clicked on a link or opened an attachment from a suspicion, suspected phishing email, then you should run a virus check on your computer just to be safe. Malware. Hacking activity. Okay, so all of this is something that can be legitimately put on. How can I check if a domain name is registered or hosted with Namecheap? We just did that with Whois. Uh, I tried to zoom in there and it probably 
died a little bit. Why does everything keep right aligning? Processing tickets. Whatever. Let's go ahead and try and submit a ticket to report this. So this is link submit ticket here. Uh, submit a ticket. Do I need to create an account for this? Abuse reports. Phishing. Oh, oh yeah, I did it. Okay, next. Your ticket details. Okay. Uh, if I could learn to type here. Abusive domain, it, we believe, is our good friend, Hurley Auctions. Abusive URLs. Um, do, 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 do. Let's grab this full jQuery link. Targeted website, the target of the phishing attack. Um, yes. Please identify the abuse material and provide information reasonably submission for you to locate it. Your message, targeted website. Please provide us with the target of the phishing attack. Well, I'm not going to just give um, uh, target there. Your subject. Um, known phishing scam. <clears throat> Hi, name cheap. In a recent investigation, we had, I, we, we, we're a family here, everybody. We had performed on, on a malicious, on a suspicious email. And given attachment, we had uncovered uh, a... Mm. What's the best way to write these things? This is the fun here. In a recent investigation, we performed a suspicious email and given attachment. We had uncovered a HTML file that would fake the look and feel of the legitimate Microsoft Office uh, Outlook login page. with a targeted username and email address waiting to receive a password. In this file, we uncovered the, the uh, entered credentials would be redirected, would be posted actually, To, to let's grab that jQuery location. Can I? Oh, I can attach files. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's send out all those email addresses there. Waiting to receive. Uh, uh, we'll send out all those screenshot attachments that we had previously. We performed a who is lookup. And deter oh my has my face been in the way the entire freaking time? Sorry. <laughs> and determined that the that this hurleyactions.us domain return either a four oh three or four oh four on any page aside from this. Uh, gs.jQuery endpoint. We believe that this domain is being hosted, uh, that the server registered with this domain, Azure Cloud Instance and harvesting credentials in a 
targeted and sophisticated. Is that is that fair to say? Targeted, sophisticated phishing attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's attach files. Um, we we should prepare some though. So we we have. Um, to do let me share this ah ah let's print screen that please okay um do i have gimp or like anything on this or where does that put screenshots ls all.png did it save those no did it just paste them anywhere paint gimp do I, do I seriously need to install gimp on my remnux installation sorry guys we have taken this video off the rails apparently um and you don't really need to see this whole portion i can probably stop the video now but i wanted to uh at least showcase the process of going ahead and starting this report and then reporting it so let me get gim set up and i'll prepare the screenshots to attach those files so we have a legitimate case here um and then i will probably get back to showcasing the video here just to wrap things up. So uh, if you haven't done this before, now you know the process. It's literally a matter of Googling. Why did that not uh, add what I wanted? That's fine. Can I draw a box? <laughs> and can I literally draw a box or do I just use a paintbrush? Maybe a line. Yeah, let's use a red line. This is the content that you guys subscribe for. I know it. That right there. There she is, Hurley Actions right there. Um, let's export this in Home Remnux Fish Screenshots Uncovered Code.png. That's fine. Um, we should also very, very likely get um, the screen. I, I said I was going to stop the video, but now I'm apparently not. So <laughs> let's uh, let's open up Firefox on stage two again, unless it's already open. Yeah, no, here it is. Do 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 do. Oh, I think I took a legitimate screenshot there, not one Remnux. I am in a VM, so that might be getting wonky. Let's, inc let's include the entire thing because I'm sure they'll look at all that. Uh, and let's get back into GIMP. Why? Did it not save it or something? Whatever. Um, I, I wanted to have the whole rest of it, but that's totally fine. So phishing page. And how many files can I attach? Is there anything else that we should include in this? Like, I don't think they really need to see the copy of stage one. <laughs> you know, like just the just the HTML loader and the JavaScript base 64. They don't need that. Um, but what else? Oh, the who is information would might be. Well, I mean, they can look that up on their own. Um, the emails are included in the screenshots. Oh, sorry. Screenshots is a lowercase word. So we've got the malware sample. We could edit this though. I think I think realistically they just need this. So email zero two, uh, and that's it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Let's go send that along. Attach files. Um. So let's get to Remnux fish. Where'd it go? Screenshots. Can I take that one and that one? Oh, can I? How many of these can I attach, please? Oh, there we go. I just have to specify each one, apparently. Fantastic. Uncovered code. Yep. And let's add the virus total scan just as well. You provide explicit consent to collect. Yes. Yes. 
I don't think there's anything that's wrong in this from what we've uncovered and understood. So that's that. Let's go ahead and uh, submit this bad boy. If I can solve a capture. Thank goodness. It's not going to test me. I am. I really am not a robot. Page is loading. Yes, your request has been received. We received your request and our team will get back to you shortly. There's our ticket. And there is the domain. In a recent investigation, we performed on a specific email and given attachment, we uncovered an HTML file that would fake the look and feel of the legitimate Microsoft Outlook login page with the target username and email address waiting to receive a password. In this file, we uncovered that the entry credentials would be posted to this domain at this endpoint. We performed a WHOIS lookup and determined this hurricane action would be returning either a 403 or 404 on any page aside from this endpoint. We believe that the server registered with the domain is being hosted with an Azure Cloud instance and harvesting credentials and targeting sophisticated phishing and watering hole attack. Reported. Woo, we're doing we're doing internet police stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but wow, golly gee, everybody. I hope that you thought that one was kind of fun. I hope that you thought that one was kind of neat. Different from what we're usually like understanding a rat or some C2 callback and stuff like that. But this was a, a phishing email that was sent along to me again by a viewer or a community member. So uh, if you'd like me to dig into some others or if we can just do any effort to hate help take down some of this bad stuff out there on the internet. Um, I'm happy to. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Email in the description. And thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something good out of it. Learned some new stuff. And uh, go report all the bad stuff that you find and that you see. It takes a village, right? Everyone playing in concert here to do better defense and cybersecurity. So uh, thanks so much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do those YouTube algorithm things. Like the video, comment, subscribe, etc. Hit the bell. Uh, that actually really legitimately helps the algorithm stuff. So if you haven't, please do hit that bell. Um, yeah, Patreon and PayPal if you want to support. You know the drill. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. With the, with the, with the, with the, with the.